What's going on, Weekend Hangover Nation? I'm your boy, Surf, and I'm back. Today, we're starting a new segment where I'm going to start touching on NFL seasons coming up, and I'm going to start touching on sports gambling. Uh, right now, we're looking at futures, and today, I'm talking about future MVP. Okay, let me start out by telling you guys that I'm an avid sports gambler. I've been doing this for well over a decade. I'm typically a parlay guy, meaning when I win, I win big. When I lose, I try to lose as small as possible. I like a good future line because even if you're running with a favorite, there's still a sweet payout at the end. It's still it's still nice if you're right. I like a good sleeper because you know that payout's bigger, but you know what? Alright, so I bet all of my picks because one, I don't want any of y'all people out there getting rich off of my picks, except for me. So if you're gonna get rich, I wanna be rich too. If we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose together. And then two, I I can't see how I could how you guys could listen to somebody who doesn't actually bet on their stuff. Like, if they're sitting out there saying they got stone cold locks, they got computer generated bets, like, how can you listen to somebody unless they're back in their own play? So, I definitely back my own play, so I'm right out here with you guys, running and gunning. So, okay. There's like 50 possibles on this MVP list. I'm going to whittle this thing down a little bit. First, we live and operate in a modern game. This ain't the 1980s. This isn't the ground and pound 90s, so from the jump, we're going to toss anyone who's not a quarterback off this list. But wait, Surf, Adrian Peterson in 2012, Alexander Tomlinson in 04 and 05? I'm sorry, guys. Barring a 20-plus touchdown year, barring all-time great 2,000-yard seasons, it just it ain't happening, man. And especially in a, in a new era where running backs' carries are just trickling down to like nothing. So we live in multiple back teams. Guys just don't get the carries to compete with quarterbacks who are getting more and more yards, more and more touchdowns every season. So I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not going to gamble on. I'm not going to gamble on running backs. And if we're going to talk about receivers, let's just say, let's just don't even think about that. Jerry Rice is the last receiver to win the MVP, and that was in 1987. 1987. Are you fucking kidding me? Why isn't this award like baseball? Call it the Montana and just let every other position play for the MVP. Okay, so that whittles us down to about 32 possibilities. Rookies don't win, so that cuts us down to 29-ish. Only twice has the award gone to a player whose team has missed the playoffs. So, And that hasn't happened since 1973. So that cuts another, well, I, I can't view the future, but I'm going to say Fitzmagic, Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton, peace. Okay. I'm going to remove the betting favorite, Patrick Mahomes, from the list. Whoa, I know, I know, I know. But before you turn off my video, before you call me an outright idiot in my comments, though, feel free, I like comments, back-to-backs are a rare occurrence. It just doesn't happen often. 08-09 was the last one with Peyton Manning. Before that, it was Favre winning three straight in the mid-90s. Though, by those standards, you could say, hey, is, aren't we due? I'm not a do guy. I'm not a guy who, if it's bound to happen, just because it hasn't happened type thing. I just, I'm a guy who sees that these voters, especially for this award, they crave new faces. Every year they're looking for a new face. Plus, there's a lot of moving parts on that Kansas City team. Sure, Mahomes has the best deep threat in the league and arguably the, the best tight end. But I'll tell you what, that running game, it's suspect. It's suspect. Last year was a plus. This year, pff, Williams, are you kidding me? I'm not saying it can't be repeated. I'm just saying I choose to bet against it. Mahomes is a plus 350. If you were wondering, you know what I mean? If you want to bet against the weekend hangover, I got you. A quick explanation on the plus 350 thing. Everything in betting works in a $100 scale. The plus indicates if you put $100, this is what you're going to win back. So if if we're betting on Mahomes, you put up $100, you win back 350. Now, if there was a minus, which there never is in futures because it's just too far away, a minus indicates how much you'll have to put up. Again, let's use 350. So you'd have to put up 350 if it was minus 350 there to win back 100. Simple. All right, guys. Now that we got the equation out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. So I was thinking about Aaron Rodgers. I was that was my initial thought when I was going into this process. I thought, man, bounce back year. <sighs> McCarthy's gone. They added Jimmy Graham, even though Aaron Rodgers has a history of not really going to tight ends. Look at Jared Cook's numbers at Green Bay. I I was thinking about it, but I just I don't think they have the supporting cast. I don't honestly I don't think the Packers are gonna be a playoff team next year, especially in that tough NFC North. 
You got to go through the Bears. You got to go through Minnesota. Got to go through the Lions, who you would think are going to be at least a little bit better. So no Rodgers. I'm banking on Breeze plus 40 now. I I just feel like he's, I feel like his 5,000 yard days are well behind him. I'm not sure he's got more weapons than Thomas to reach reach 50 touchdowns. So I'm not going to go Breeze. I also think that Ingram loss. I know they've replaced it with Murray, but I think that Ingram loss is going to be big on that offense. I know people are in love with Kamara, but I think somebody's got to got to get those tough yards, and I'm not sure certainly have that. So no breeze. Tom Brady lost too much. So I was looking around. I was looking around. I almost stumbled on Goff. Uh, I just don't trust him. I just don't trust him. I I can't see him putting a full season together. Last year was really nice, and this is year three under McVay. Then I looked at Andrew Luck. And the injuries are already creeping up right now, even though they've added as much as they have on the offseason. Love Paris Campbell, go of Hilton, and those two tight ends, watch out. But, all right, here's the weekend hangover pick. 2019 MVP, Deshaun Watson. He's plus 2,300, and man, that would be a sweet, juicy fruit level. Sweetness in my pocket heading into 2020. I'm gonna I'm gonna back this play, man. I might put 200 on that thing, and 5,000 back would be nice, or at least 4,600 would be nice. <laughs> Here's why I like Watson. Firstly, he's got arguably the best receiver in the planet in Hopkins. His jump from year one to year two under O'Brien was damn impressive across the board. His completion percentage jumped seven points. His yards jumped by 2,500. His touchdowns went from 19 to 26, and all this was done without a full complement of receivers. Watson has shown great chemistry with deep threat Will Fuller, and they have Kiki Cutie, which I was corrected on pronunciation uh, with his underneath game, should be really nice. I know he plays in this increasingly difficult AFC South, yeah, but that's that's part of the risk. 2300 man, that's, that's a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. I think this Houston team is a playoff team. I think that defense is as sharp as it's ever been. I, I know the Tyron Matthew loss, but if you look at my previous Houston breakdown, I think they're going to be fine. So, I'm I, here at Weekend Hangover at 20, plus 2300 is a risk worth exploring. Anyways, guys, this has been another Weekend Hangover cast. I'm your boy, Surf. Leave us a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to be back with more betting picks, more coverage, getting ready for the season. Shoot, I'm going to do some preseason betting picks coming up here. So who wants to make some money on some preseason? I know I do. <laughs> Laters.